In this demonstration, we're going to show you how the new data palette help you work with REST services more easily. What we're going to create here, we have an app and we're going to add a REST service. We're going to use a Swagger-based REST service that points to uh, our App Store. So we're going to copy link address. There's a bunch of operations here that we can do on pets in our store. And in Visual Builder, we can define access to the pet store using Swagger and just paste the definition here. Let's copy the full open API to our application. And this will create the service connection along with all the endpoints. So if we now look at the endpoints here, we have all the endpoints for a pet, we have endpoints for a store, etc. Now we can go back to our UI and start designing a user interface. So let's suppose we want to add a new pet to our collection. To do that, we can start dragging and dropping components, or we can use the new data palette over here, where under services, we'll see our pet store, and we'll also see the pet endpoint. So the pet actually has multiple endpoints that we can use here, and, and we can drag a specific endpoint or just drag the whole pet, and this would help us by allowing us to, for example, create the create form. So this would be mapped to the create pet, and then we can choose which fields to show. So let's put in a, an ID, name, and status. So this allows us now to create a new pet in our inventory. Visual Builder went over and created all the UI items. Each UI item is bound directly to a variable, and the variable was also something we created here for you. So there's a variable here called pet, and you can see that the pet variable is based on a type, and the type is another thing that we created for you um, that indicates the type of the pet. We also created an event listener for the save button, and the event listener is hooked up to an action chain that actually creates the pet, and this is all those steps over here. So now you have a full functioning create page. Let's go over and also create the search page. So to do that, we're going to switch over to the search page. And just like before, we can now start by dragging over a pet. And let's drop the pet over, and we can drop it as a table, for example. Okay, And this would be get many, and we can get by tag or status. We'll use the status. And um, we'll show you the ID the name and the status of the animal. And we need to pass in a status. Um, so this would actually be just for pending pets. So let's add pending over here. But this can, of course, can be bound to a variable if we need to. Right, so now we can see all the uh, pending pets. Okay. Another thing we can do now is we can modify this table, for example, to add a link. So allowing us to choose a specific cat Oh, a pet, just by dropping the link over here. And we're going to have an event on the link. When we click the link, we want to assign a variable to indicate which pet we selected. And to do that, we're going to take the key and we're going to put it in a page variable. We'll call this one the selected pet ID. And that would be a numeric value. So let's take the key, put it into the new variable over here. All right. So now that we have a variable with a selected pet, maybe we want to get the full set of information on this pet. So again, using the data palette, we can go to the pet, drag and drop it over here. And this time we can create an edit form. So this would allow us to update the data about the pet. So we can again add ID, name, and status, and click Next. Uh, we need to provide the pet ID. This would be the selected pet ID. And this would allow us to fetch the right information here. So we created all the components here for you. We created types, we created variables and actions. Let's run our little application now. First, we can add a new uh, member to our inventory. So let's add uh, the, the 765 and the name would be uh, max the cat and the status would be pending let's save the data and this saves the data in 
the backend. Now we can go back to the search page and we can see Max the Cat here. We can click on Max the Cat and get the data about Max the Cat and we can update their name and send and save event. So this updated the cat's name. 